There's a there's a delay, and they can hear everything you say too. Okay.
morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to another beautiful morning at Science Hill Community Church, where, uh, as I was telling Craig this morning, this is Sunday 15 of the last 16 that we've been able to be outside and worshiping the Lord together. Because we are a hearty people, <laughs> and we serve a great God. I, you know, my kids are, well, soon, I'm, I, I only have a teenager for, for one more week. Katie turns 20 in, in a week, so we've got one week left. I remember when we had three teenagers. That was crazy. But all my kids, as they're in their, coming up into their 20s, they all want to move south and go to warmer climates. And I tell them, you got to stay in Ohio and be hardy. <laughs> so it is good to, to welcome you this morning, to greet you today. Uh, God has given us a beautiful day in which to worship him. So we're going to do that this morning. We're going to continue our journey through the Gospel of Mark and uh, find out what the Lord has for us today. Will you join me in prayer? <coughs> oh Lord, it's a good morning. It's a good morning for us to be together, to see one another, Lord, to be here at your house, out in your backyard, and to be enjoying the wonders of nature and the wonder of worship. For Lord, that's what we're here about this morning. We're here to worship you, to call out to you, to seek your face, to pray to you, to sing to you, to hear from your word to be encouraged, Lord, for the week ahead, to be strengthened in our faith, to find healing, to find forgiveness, to find whatever you have for us, Lord. We pray for your Holy Spirit to be among us this morning, to be moving, Lord, among us, and to be uniting us, Lord, as one body, one church, one community of faith for you. And Lord, as we begin this morning, we thank you we thank you for bringing us through so much, for blessing us so much, and for being with us. We thank you, we praise you, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Could you please stand for our call to worship as Gary Casto comes to share the call to worship. The title of the call of worship is For Grace to Serve Selflessly is number 667 in the hymnal. Teach us, good Lord, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for any reward except that of knowing that we do your will. Christ our Lord. Amen. And Gary, you can bring up, oops, sorry, bring up the, the scripture for us. We're going to be hearing from Mark uh, chapter 11, verses 19 through 26. When evening came, they went off to the city. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the root. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look. The fig tree you cursed has withered. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him, so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. Thank you, Gary. You may be seated. opened his family's huge old Bible with great interest. He was fascinated by the giant colorful pages as he slowly turned them. 
But suddenly something big fell out of that Bible and he picked it up and examined it closely. It was a large leaf from a tree that had been pressed in between some pages. Mom, look what I found, the boy called out. What have you got there, dear? His mother asked. With astonishment in his voice, the young boy answered, I think it's Adam's suit. <laughs> we see the leaves falling down uh, among us today and uh, reminds us we're in a very beautiful time of the year. Debbie and I took a walk at Silver Park yesterday and the trees were yellow and orange and red and it was just, it was just beautiful. It's a great time to, to enjoy the trees. You know, I believe that each of us have some plants that we love and some that we hate. And I'm going to read off a list of plants, trees, flowers, and if you love them or if you hate them, if you have a, a strong feeling about them either way, raise your hand, okay? Dandelions. <laughs> now, any fellow dandelion lovers? Uh, I think there's some haters out there. People, people sometimes love dandelions or hate them. Lilacs. Lilacs. Poison ivy. <laughs> Who really hates poison ivy? It gets it bad. Long stemmed roses. Better see your hand. <laughs> Dogwood trees. Beautiful, aren't they? Goldenrod. Anybody with allergies? Yeah. Easter lilies. I love Easter lilies. Well, we can't go without saying here in Alliance, scarlet carnation. What about the giant sequoia? I haven't seen one in person yet, but it's, it's on our bucket list. We're going to get out there. Apple trees. They're a blessing, aren't they? <coughs> Crabgrass. Who loves, who loves crabgrass? I hate it. <laughs> Christmas trees. Sunflowers. Sweet corn. Marijuana. <laughs> Good resist. There seem, there seem to be plants and trees that uh, we all love and or hate. And oddly enough, I believe there were plants and trees that Jesus loved and hated too. For instance, I bet Jesus loved mustard trees. He once told a parable comparing the kingdom of heaven to a mustard seed and a mustard plant. Though the mustard seed is very tiny, from it comes forth a tree large enough for animals to make their homes in. And if Jesus were giving that parable in Ohio today, he would probably talk about acorns and oak trees. I think Jesus also loved wildflowers. Here's what he had to say about them in Matthew chapter 6. Why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? In his parable of the sower and in his parable of the wheat and tares, Jesus champions the planting of the farmer's choice crops while lamenting the weeds that grow up around them and choke out their life. And here in the Gospel of Mark, we come across a very peculiar story about one plant that Jesus apparently did not like, a certain fig tree. Now this story, as we get into it and look at it this morning, it's another example of a parenthetical narrative that we've seen before in Mark. Uh, we see it several times in this Gospel. It's a literary device that Mark uses to draw us in. By beginning to tell us one story, then he leaves that in the middle to tell us another, and then returns to finish his original story, like we saw in the account of the raising of Jairus' daughter, which was interrupted by the story of the healing of the bleeding woman. 
Now, last Sunday, if you recall, we, we talked about tells us that story. He actually starts on this one that we're finishing today. Last week we read, and I didn't talk about it, I didn't get a, an email question about it, but we read last week, the next day as they were leaving Bethany, which would have been on a Monday, the day after Palm Sunday, Jesus was hungry. And seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. And then Mark goes in and tells us the story of the cleansing of the temple. And today we picked up with the continuation and conclusion of the story about what happened to that fig tree that Jesus cursed. Gary read it for us. As they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. So, why? What does Jesus have against fig trees? Why would he go out of his way to use his authority to exert his power to cause a fig tree to shrivel up and die? What's the point? Fig trees have a long and illustrious history in the Bible. Starting as early as Genesis chapter 3, where we read of Adam's suit of fig leaves, we, uh, we first come across them, and then we also encounter fig trees in the books of Judges, Joel, Hosea, Jeremiah, Micah, Habakkuk, Isaiah, the Song of Solomon, Nahum, and Proverbs. Most of the time, the fig tree appears in a positive context in reference to its delicious fruit. In the prophetic books, however, uh, the Jews themselves are occasionally reckoned as figs on a fig tree, or we find that a fig tree, sometimes a barren fig tree like the one Jesus came across, stands as a symbol of Israel, the nation. And the fig tree continues to appear in the New Testament, figuring often in the ministry of Jesus. For instance, not only does Jesus curse this unfortunate, unfruitful fig tree in the Gospels of Mark and Matthew, he also tells a parable in the Gospel of Luke about a similar tree. If you flip over to Luke, you find this story. Jesus said a man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. The tree in that parable is on borrowed time. It's given a final opportunity, one last chance to become productive and be fruitful. If not, it's the axe. The point of that parable is kind of the same as the miracle that Jesus worked. And Jesus also employs a fig tree in what we're going to see in a couple chapters in his upcoming discussion with his disciples about the end times, using it to answer their primary question of when these destructive events would take place. In Mark 13, Jesus says, Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near right at the door. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to Mark 13. Well, many people wonder, why would Jesus curse a fig tree, especially since, as Mark tells us, it wasn't even the season for figs. It doesn't seem very fair to blame a tree for not being fruitful when it wasn't time. We, we may be able to understand it a little better if we learn about the specific nature of the seasonality of a fig tree in the Middle East. There are actually two times in the year when a fig tree produces fruit. Summer or early fall, that's when figs are harvested, and they're the kind that people enjoy and eat, make big newtons out of. But in the early springtime, which is when our story takes place, fig trees also produce a kind of fruit, a kind of fig, 
But these are not normally the kind that are eaten unless you are really desperate. They are a hard, round kind of fruit in this earlier part of the year. Not too many people are interested in those. But the thing is, if a fig tree does not bear these earlier kinds of rough figs, it will be barren later in the year, or at least produce a very meager crop of the good figs. So the lack of figs here in the springtime was a tell that the tree was giving that it wasn't going to be fruitful on later on in the year either. And Jesus is tired of it, he's sick of it, he's ready to pull the plug on it. Now if you ask me, the underlying point of this story is not that Jesus is so much concerned about figs, but about fruitfulness in general. Just like his other teachings show, Jesus wants to see his creation, he wants to see us bear fruit, to be fruitful. Jesus consistently stressed the importance of fruit, whether it's in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew when he talks about the importance of evaluating fruit to determine if a person is a true prophet or a false prophet. We see it again at the Last Supper in John when Jesus teaches that he is the vine and we are the what? Branches. We are the branches and that we must remain in him if we are to bear fruit. Branches that don't bear fruit are gathered together, thrown into the fire, and burned. Our fig tree in leaf, but with no early fruit in Mark 11, was a mirage. It was promising fruitfulness, but ultimately misleading. It had the outward appearance of what Jesus was seeking, what he was looking for, but was ultimately without fruit. In a way, it was the perfect representative of a hypocrite. It was just like the rotten core of the Jewish faith with two-faced Pharisees and temple-corrupting Sadducees. But there's one thing that you can pick up in the Gospels that Jesus didn't like apart from fig trees. It was hypocrites. And that was the problem with this tree. It was advertising itself as a good tree in those leaves that it had, but it was dead inside. And Jesus just decided to let its outside match its inside. If a fig tree's fruitfulness is this much of an issue to Jesus, what about our fruitfulness? Is your life fruitful? Yay or nay? And what about our church's fruitfulness? Is Science Hill Community Church fruitful? Yay or or nay? How do you even measure fruitfulness when we talk in terms like that? We don't produce figs or apples or anything else. Well, one way is to look at the biblical list of the fruit of the Spirit in Paul's letter to the Galatians. There are nine qualities listed there, the fruit that the Bible says should mark the lives of Christians. Love. Joy. Peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. How are we doing on that score? What is the fruit of your life? What do you produce? What do you leave in your wake? How do people feel when you come into a room? What do they say when you leave? What kind of impact do you have in the world and among your circle of family and friends? What would the people who know you the best and most intimately say about you and your character, your fruit? Now these may be very difficult questions to ask ourselves. But it's essential that we do so from time to time. We don't want to play a game of pretending that everything is all right when it's not. Pretending that we're fruitful when we're not. That was the fig tree's problem. Now there is a good type of pretending that C.S. Lewis talks about in his book, Mere Christianity. And that's when we 
when we lean into our future and begin acting like the way we want to be, even if we may not be all the way there yet, it can kind of be practice instead of pretending. But the bad type of pretending is hypocrisy. That was the flaw in the fig tree and in the Pharisees of Jesus' day, who Jesus had the biggest problem with. The ultimate lesson of the cursed fig tree, the fruitless fig tree, don't make promises you can't keep. Don't guarantee things you can't deliver. Don't pretend to be fruitful when you're not. Be honest about who you are and strive to be fruitful. What was the very first command that God gave us in the garden? The first thing he said to human beings in Genesis 1, 28. Be fruitful. Be fruitful and multiply. I always took it that those two words meant the same thing. You know, fill the earth. But what if, what if they don't? What if being fruitful in our lives, to be fruitful, was our first and foremost responsibility, our, our first calling? And what was Jesus' last command to his disciples before his ascension? It's, a, it's similar. He said, go into all the world and make disciples. Be fruitful. One final question to ask. If we feel that our fruitfulness is more meager than we would like, if we would like to grow in our fruitfulness, we can ask this question. Is our lack of outer fruitfulness the result of a lack of inner faithfulness? Is there a connection between what we produce and who we are? Jesus concluded his discussion here in Mark 11 with the disciples by talking about just what is needed to do miracles like the one he just demonstrated in the cursing of the fig tree. Peter, after all, is, is wow. He's, he's astonished. He's stunned that Jesus' words were fulfilled so quickly and that a tree which had been in leaf on Monday was dead from its roots on Tuesday. He wanted to know how this had happened and what Jesus had to teach them about it. Jesus answered, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, Forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Now this is deep water, and I can't tell you that I've reached that state of faith or fruit where I can throw mountains into the sea, or experience that I receive everything I pray for. But what I can tell you is that I know Jesus is both faithful and fruitful. And that we need to have faith in him and bear fruit for him as well. And the key to doing so, the key to doing so, the best way in all the world to get there is to draw closer to the one who showed us by the way he lived his life here on earth. That he wants to see growth and faithfulness and fruitfulness in our lives and in our church. Take a moment to pray. Father God, we thank you for the lessons that Jesus continually taught, even in what strikes us at, at first as an inexplicable act of cursing of a tree and seeing it die. And we struggle to understand why? Lord, thank you as we look closer at that story and the others in the Bible, we see the stress, the emphasis, the importance of bearing fruit. Lord, and as we look over our life, as we sift through the things that we hold dear, the way that we spend our time, the words that we plant in the lives of others, the 
opportunities that we have to share our faith, the qualities of the fruit of the Spirit from Galatians. We sense, Lord, that that is what you desire for our lives to have and to be as well, to be fruitful. Help us, Lord, to do that as we look to the week ahead. Help us, Lord, to find those, those chances that you give us each and every day to grow in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. To identify those times where, where we may be talking with someone and have the opportunity to offer in that conversation a word of testimony about our relationship with you and what it has meant for our lives. Help us, Lord, not to draw back and be unfruitful, but to be fearless and share with others what we have received from you. Help us, Lord, to fulfill that first command you gave us in the garden and the last command Jesus gave us before he ascended to you to go and bear fruit. We thank you, Lord, for this time together, this time of challenge and promise of grace. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to share with you the prayers uh, of our church family that we have ongoing and the ones that uh, we have from this past week on the prayer chain, even this morning. I had a request uh, from Shirley. She texted this morning and asked uh, for urgent prayers this morning for her daughter, Sarah Farnham. I don't know any details, but uh, Sarah is in need of prayer this morning. The family is, so let's be praying for Sarah and Shirley and the whole family there, uh, praying for God to meet them at their point of need. Talking with Nancy Harsh this morning, she lifted up um, Pastor Pete Fowler. He is the pastor at Salem Friends Church, um, and he has been diagnosed with COVID. So we'll be praying for Pete and family and the church out there uh, at Salem Friends. Speaking of COVID, um, one of our church members has struggled uh, this week. Uh, Shirley Rock has been diagnosed with the coronavirus. I've had opportunity to talk with her and her family members several times this week. It's been rough. Uh, she's, she's had many of the symptoms and have really brought her down. Um, but Friday she talked to her doctor. Her doctor said she was probably halfway through it. Uh, so that was encouraging. And, and on Saturday she was feeling a little bit better uh, than she had been previously. So I guess I want to say that Shirley. She said she, she tried to watch us yesterday on, online and I said, I oh, gotta wait one more day, but I'd like to <laughs> wish uh, Shirley a happy birthday yesterday and sp send her a special hi. Uh, she's watching us this morning. We had on the prayer chain this week, Blanche Moore's granddaughter, Kelsey, who had emergency gallbladder surgery on Thursday. Is she doing okay, Blanche? She's still in pain, but she doesn't have to take uh, the narcotic pain medicine. She's down to like Tylenol and all this stuff. Okay, still in pain, but off of the hard stuff and improving so we'll pray for Kelsey for that to continue. We have been praying for several weeks for Brian Bickle's mother Doris. Uh, Brian flew out to California a couple weeks ago on Friday. Ellen flew there to join him and on that day on Friday uh, Ellen's mother or Brian's mother I'm sorry Brian's mother went home to be with the Lord. Uh, they're out in Los Angeles California area so please be praying for Brian his brother Pete I know he has some other siblings as well Ellen uh, the whole family this time of time of loss to them we're thinking of them Connie Poto uh, begins her immunotherapy the chemotherapy starts this week on the 14th I believe uh, she'll be getting that one time a month for about six months so she's starting that journey let's be praying for Connie and Bob and the family uh, in that treatment course David Hayden had bypass surgery on Wednesday down in Columbus and uh, is he doing okay? Thumbs up on David. Good. He I'm glad to hear that. Sends his thanks for our prayers. We'll keep praying for his recovery. Um, 
others that I know of, Les Wade, I talked with Rose this morning. This is Rose's father-in-law. He's going to be having surgery on October 29th. Uh, so we're praying for him and his healing journey there. And he's 91. Yes. So praying for, for him there. We want to continue to pray for Bev Carlin, for Richard Berube, and Mike Berube, and the whole family there. Donna Grubb, Nick Conti, who seems to be making progress. We're thankful to hear that about Nick. Uh, Gino Snyder. Uh, Gino just completed his chemotherapy, and uh, he'll be going to the doctor next week, I believe he said, to get uh, evaluated some results and find out how effective it was and what may be needed. So let's be praying for Gino as he gets some answers and a new direction uh, for his treatment of cancer. Ben Favazzo, we want to be praying for. Peggy Hawkins and her grandson, AJ. Continue to pray for Kathy Noble, Connor McGough. Sue Givens, John and Kim Amazer, Carla Hoover, Anne Marie Davidson, and Dave and Pat Kennard. Are there any others? Let's pray. Oh, yes, Blanche. Um, my daughter has was lifting something and twisted her back in a way she has back pain. Monday she couldn't even get out of bed and Okay, for Blanche's daughter lifted something and hurt her back. We pray for her for recovery. Yes, Debbie. Uh, for Dave Wyan, he's having knee surgery this week, replacement surgery. Dave Wyan is having knee replacement surgery this week. into your family through the precious blood of Jesus Christ, thus making us brothers and sisters together, making us, Lord, your family here on earth. And Lord, we know that one of the things that we can do is, is not just to pray for ourselves, Father, that we do that, but to intercede for others, to come before you and to pray for those, whether they're in our own church family or whether they're in our larger community, Lord, folks that, that we care about, that we love, and we know, Father, that, that if we love them and we care about them, you must love them and care about them even far greater than we do, Lord. So, Lord, we lift these up to you, all that have been named. We pray, Father, for your touch of grace to be upon their lives. You know the need, Lord. Sometimes we think we know, sometimes we know we don't know the need. But Lord, you know each and every need, and you're able to supply that need according to the riches of your grace. Father, we just read how, how Jesus said if we believe in our hearts when we pray for something, and we can trust you to turn that over to you. Pray, Lord, that it, that it would be done. So Father, help us to pray in faith this morning for all these that, that we are caring about lifting up in our hearts before you. Help us to know, Lord, that in you they may have peace and healing and rest and recovery and life. Father, we're thankful that we can pray for one another in our need, that we can pray for our, our president, all of our leadership, Lord, whether Democrat or Republican or Independent. Father, we can pray for the nations of the world. We can pray for your church around the world. Lord, for all those places where, where there are many more hurdles to overcome than just being outside on a pleasant fall day. We pray, Father, for our brothers and sisters, not just here at Science Hill, but throughout the churches of Alliance, Ohio, the United States, and around the world. And we're thankful, Lord, that we can look to the future and know that we don't have to worry we don't have to be anxious but we can live in a state of trust and peace thank you lord for all of these things in the precious name of jesus our savior and lord who taught us to pray our father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven. 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, just to let you know what's coming up in these next few moments, I'm going to share the announcements uh, of our church family that we'd be interested in, in knowing about, hopefully. Uh, we're going to take then a short break so that anyone who doesn't feel comfortable remaining for singing, you'll have an opportunity to discreetly make your exit. Um, and then we'll conclude the worship service with singing a couple of hymns um, and the benediction. So that's what's coming up. Um, announcements. Um, well, what a beautiful day it has turned out to be. I just, I just love the, the temperature, the lack of breeze, uh, everything. It's, it's beautiful to be out today. And uh, whether you're here, whether you're watching us uh, on the live stream, uh, we thank you for being with us. And please let us know if you're watching remotely. Um, Thank you for those that are bringing in candy donations. Uh, anytime you want to do that during uh, October, you can bring those in the next couple weeks. The outreach committee is going to be gathering the last week of October to package those up for our drive through trick or treat. Uh, we've gotten lots of great donations already. Thank you. Um, there's going to be five stations set up on Halloween between five and seven where uh, people may drive through and receive a, a, a treat uh, and many different expressions of love from our congregation. So we're excited about that ministry coming up. Our October mission of the month is looking ahead to Christmas, uh, the Spread the Warmth event, which takes place in, in Alliance and helps uh, those that primarily, I think it was initially designed for the homeless, but now for, for any that are lower income and are struggling, uh, supplies, warm clothing, uh, they do a, a wide variety of assistance and help at that event. Um, so that's where our mission of the month is going for October looking ahead to December. Some things that are on the calendar today, I just wanted to mention that at Marlington High School parking lot from noon to I think six-ish, it's on the sign over here, they're having a food truck um, fundraiser. So if you're looking for a place to eat today, you might want to check out the food trucks at Marlington. There's also an open house at uh, two organizations in Downtown Alliance called Clothed in Righteousness and The Way. Uh, this is at 55 and 57 East Main Street. Uh, the, the open house is from 2 to 4 today. You can go check out their ministries and what they're doing. Um, they ask if you come along, if you can bring a donation, uh, possibly cleaning or hygiene supplies to help them out in their ministry. I just lift that up to you. I think that that's a, a, a neat thing happening in Alliance. Tonight we're having our Zoom Bible study. Uh, we're going to be studying the last 11 chapters of Luke, Luke chapter 14 through 24. Uh, there's 20 questions on our Bible blog. We'll be looking at those tonight. You can log on starting at 6.45. We kind of do our fellowship the first 15 minutes, and then at 7 o'clock we get into the study. Tomorrow night at 7 is Consistory. Wednesday, 6 o'clock, Witness Youth Group is meeting here at the church. 6.30, Kindness Club on Zoom. Uh, again, we talked a lot about being fruitful uh, in the sermon, and if you are interested in being fruitful, especially as it comes to sharing your faith. I once again want to lift up the training event that's going to take place the first weekend of November. It's going to be over at Compassion Church in North Canton. It's called No Place Left, and we're interested in taking a group with us on Friday night and all day Saturday. This is the first Friday, first Saturday in November. I think it's the 6th and 7th. And if you have questions about that or would like to sign up, uh, please let me know. We'll, we're going to put a group together to go to that. If there are folks that are listening to me either here or online and are interested in joining our church, if you've never done that before, I think that'd be an awesome thing to join this year, have something good <laughs> come out of 2020. Um, if you would be interested in joining our church officially, I'm looking at putting together a membership class uh, over the next several weeks and hopefully bringing in new members uh, maybe late November uh, before the end of the year. So please let me know if that's something that you would be interested in finding out more about. Our birthdays and anniversaries today, we want to wish a happy birthday to Tyler Church. Uh, he's down in Dallas. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Shirley and Donald Rock. Donald and Shirley Rock are having an anniversary tomorrow. Wish 
she really knows how to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries <laughs> with COVID. But I said she can celebrate next month when she's over these things. Tomorrow is uh, Don and Shirley's anniversary. On the 14th, a uh, couple of anniversaries, Corey and Candace Casto and Adam and Katie Todd. On the 15th is Lisa Church's birthday. On the 18th, which is next Sunday, Becky Horniak's birthday. And on the 19th, next Monday, Sue Thomas and my daughter Katie Davis are birthday buddies. Who do you stand for the benediction? I'm sorry, we're not doing the benediction now. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna take about one minute and uh, just kind of do some transition time. You can get your song sheet ready. And if you are uh, uncomfortable with staying for singing, now's a great time to make your exit. But we'll be singing Great is thy faithfulness in just a moment. stand and sing together, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
about that hymn. I used to be a youth pastor over in Louisville, and we sang that song one Sunday morning, and afterwards one of the teenagers, one of the youth group members, came up and brought me this piece of paper. It was all folded up, like about as much as you could fold a piece of paper. This. And he said, it's a manifold witness. Oh. <laughs> he, he, he left an impression on me with that. A manifold witness. We're going to sing In the Garden. Let's sing In the Garden. <laughs> blessed this morning. I know I am. It's been good to be with you. I look forward to being with you again next week. And anytime in between this week, if you're here at church or on Zoom, it's good to be connected during this time of great disconnection. Until then, until we meet again, go in the grace and peace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, now and evermore. Amen. Thank you.